I've alluded to this in other videos, but encryption is only as strong as its transparency. The best encryption protocol is one with nothing to hide. Because airtight encryption works whether you know the process or not. There are no holes, no leaks, no places for someone to stick a wrench into things. We return to end-to-end -to -end encryption, the Mount Olympus, the Holy Grail, the zenith of messaging security, where it is fundamentally impossible for a message's contents to be ascertained by anyone other than the participants. If you're new here, I will once more link you to a video where the process is explained by someone far smarter and infinitely more qualified than me. After my latest videos reviewing Telegram and covering WhatsApp vulnerabilities, I felt it important to dedicate a whole video to this. If you are using WhatsApp or iMessage, your conversations are not secure. This is not clickbait or hyperbole or fanboy tribalism. Let's start with WhatsApp. WhatsApp partnered with Open Whisper Systems to bring the Signal encryption protocol to their app in 2014 and fully implemented it throughout every WhatsApp communication medium by 2016. In theory, this should be foolproof. Signal have made their encryption protocol public, you can see just how it works. And works it does. Signal was subpoenaed in 2016 to provide all possible communications data for conversations between two of their users. Here's what they had to share. That's it then. Done deal. Roll the credits. Except it isn't, because WhatsApp does not show how the end-to-end -end encrypted sausage is being made. They just say they make it that way. If a company does not post their encryption protocol in a verifiable manner, they absolutely have something to hide. Imagine if a store didn't show you the total before you paid, or give you a receipt after. You'd assume every item's price was properly entered into their system and matched what was on the shelf, but you can't be sure. What would you do if that store refused to give you a receipt? You wouldn't shop there. Because there's no reason not to. A receipt is simply showing that they are in fact charging you what they say they are. So WhatsApp, where are the receipts? Signal is open source. Telegram is open source. WhatsApp has only a basic white paper explaining how their end-to-end -end encryption works, but there's no way to prove that's actually what they put in. Nor is there a way to see what else might have been put in alongside it that could compromise its security. You simply have to take their word for it. Yes, Facebook's word. You know, that unwavering pillar of privacy and democracy the uncompromising champion of the people. Words do seem to be their game, as it certainly hasn't been features lately, and have spent more time rebranding than developing. I don't want to get on a soapbox just to bash WhatsApp. That's not what I'm here for. This is simply fundamental. A multi-billion dollar company with two billion users worldwide that is not doing right by their users and actively deceiving them through omission. Like Abraham Lincoln once said, yo, that's f***ed up. What's up iMessage? I have a bone to pick with you too. Apple is another company that loves to tout its privacy standards, but once again has only shown them in name. Besides the iCloud vulnerabilities and the latest news that Apple caved on iCloud encryption after the FBI gave them a hard time, there is a serious fundamental issue with Apple's implementation of end-to-end -end encryption. End-to-end -end encryption and synced devices are generally mutually exclusive, seeing as the messages are only stored on the participating devices. However, iMessage seems like the exception boasting chats that you can use on any of your overpriced electronics, some of which I own and use daily. iMessage is in control of generating new public keys, so that way when you log into your iCloud account on a new device, the chat history is automatically populated, assuming you back it up there as basically everyone does. Apple generates a new key for each user's device that participates, so if you really looked at your chat with your roommate, it isn't you and Kyle, it's your iPhone, your iPad, and your MacBook with Kyle's iPhone, iMac, and iPod Touch. Really? An iPod Touch, Kyle? In 2020? The problem with this is that there is no notification of another device joining the chat, no way of tracking how many devices are participating, and no way of stopping Apple from adding anything, or anyone, to your chat through a new key. 
For all we know, every iMessage ever sent could have been CC'd to the CIA. There is no way to verify the keys, and therefore the participants. Both WhatsApp and iMessage fall victim to the same two flaws. Obscure encryption practices and private chat backups. Your extra devices regain the chat history from your iCloud or Google Drive backups, which you, and your friends, are responsible for keeping secure. I do my best to use secure passwords and protect myself online, but it isn't only up to me. If Kyle gets fished, my messages with him are now compromised. If a chain is only as strong as its weakest link, boy, we're in for some trouble. And that's the problem. You never know. I don't know who's in my chats, nor do I know who only has password 1234 standing between their backup and a hacker.